power angle equation, swing equation and equal area criteria but to study under the setting. Start with uh, the power angle equation. We know that there are two types of stability were deals with that is one is called as steady state stability the other one is transient stability. The steady state stability we know is the stability of the system under a condition of gradual or relatively slow change in the load condition. Here also there is a change in the load conditions means that the, the power output of the generator should change because of change in the, the load angle. Therefore, there is a relation between the, the power delivered and the, the load angle delta or torque angle delta. That is, that equation which is relating the power delivered and the load angle, what you are calling is the power angle equation. That you have to look into. And the another stability we are interested in is a transient stability. That is, the ability of the power system to regain stable conditions in the event of large changes in the network conditions such as the fault, sudden large incremental loads and so on. Here also the once again the ultimate effect is the change in the, the power output conditions. Here also there is a deviation of the angle delta. Therefore, the deviation of the angle delta with respect to the power that is we are correlating this equation then what we are calling is the power angle equation. Then we will go for the swing equation and the analysis of stability study using equal area criteria. I will start with the power angle equation. First I will consider for the salient, non-salient pole type of the, the machine that is cylindrical machine. Then we know the, the circuit model of a non salient pole type of machine. It is represented by a source of voltage and its resistance and the synchronous reactance excess. And it is nothing but it is a mainly consisting of that is we are referring this to be the power system consisting of two AC voltages that is one is the internal voltage that is a generated voltage in the machine and whereas the V is the terminal voltage ok where deals with the two voltages that is the generated voltage or the internal voltage and the, the terminal voltage and connecting these two voltages as a impedance synchronous impedance comprises of resistance and the synchronous reactance that is ZS is RA plus ZXS therefore at the angle which is between E and V that what we are calling is load angle or it is also called as a torque angle. You are here dealing with the two voltages E and V and connecting this E and V is the synchronous impedance that is and the angle between E and V is the delta and the phi is the power factor angle that is the angle between the voltage and the, the current voltage that is the terminal voltage in the current that is what we are calling is the power factor angle. With this uh, the nomenclature just I am representing here the synchronous generator it is comprised of a terminal voltage V that is taken as a reference therefore it is V an angle of 0 degree then the angle between V and E that is we are representing as an angle delta as angle delta therefore I am writing with respect to V E an angle of delta therefore the relation that is phase displacement between V and E is a delta that is for if you are taking V as 0 with respect to V then E is E an angle of delta and we have got a synchronous impedance comprised of R e and XS and the current delivered is the I a. current delivered is I a. that depending upon the power factor of the load it may be lag lead or it is in phase with the, the voltage therefore the V is taken as a reference that is V an angle of 0 degree and the E is internal voltage as E an angle of delta whereas ZS is 
it is a uh, impedance is expressed in its polar form with its magnitude and angle z is an angle of phi and can draw the, the vector diagram here therefore first what i have to take is the v as a reference v as a reference here i am considering lagging load therefore i am drawing ia lagging v by an angle of phi therefore ia lagging an angle of phi then to get e what i have add i have add ir drop and ix drop to v therefore first i am adding ir drop that is it is in phase with ia it is in phase with ia then to the tip of ir i have to add ia axis which is perpendicular to i which is perpendicular to i therefore it is i axis and the sum of the vector sum of v plus i r and i axis what i am getting here is the internal voltage e now the angle between v and e that is what we are present is delta therefore this is i z s then this is angle the delta this so we have to draw the vector diagram for the the norm c at pole type machine with the help of this diagram just we try to derive the relation between the power delivered and the load emitted we know that the power delivered that is a power output is given by vi cos phi it is per phase basis vi cos phi per phase if you are taking a three phase just you have to multiply with 3 that is p is equal to 3 times vi vi cos phi it is a basic equation of power delivered i am building my equation based on the fundamental p is equal to vi cos phi then i know the value of i that is you can refer back here the value of i is because of potential difference between e and v and because of the impedance offered is that is that is the current ia is because of the difference in the two potential at from this point to this point what is the potential difference e minus v divided by z as that gives the i therefore i am writing here i is equal to e minus v divided by z as just you have to put its their the actual values in its uh, polar form that is e is e an angle of delta v is v an angle of zero z as z an angle of phi just i am putting i is equal to instead of e e an angle of delta v an angle of zero z an angle of z as an angle of phi just you have to uh, z as you have to divide to the each individual terms then what i am getting is i is equal to e an angle of delta divided by z an angle of phi then after simplification phi should be brought to the numerator so that it is becomes delta minus phi therefore e by z is e by z is delta minus phi this minus is as it is then it is v by z is it is 0 minus phi therefore this angle phi then what i am interested is i cos phi what i am interested is i cos phi you have to take the 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 real part of i that is nothing but your i cos phi that is your if you are taking a real part of i this i that is nothing but your i cos phi or you can take the i cos phi on either side of this equation what i am getting here is taking real part of i that is i cos phi i cos phi is equal to e z s cos of delta minus phi minus v by z s cos of minus phi cos of minus phi is cos phi only therefore it is cos phi therefore i am getting i cos phi then we can substitute this value on this equation then what i am getting here as i cos phi just it is e by z is cos delta minus phi minus this cos phi this cos phi i am replacing by from the impedance triangle it is r by z r by z therefore if we are r by z means it is vr by z square therefore it is vr by z square what i am doing here cos phi is replaced by r by z from the impedance triangle that is i am written here r a by z s r a by z s this uh, cos phi can be replaced by r by z then this is the equation for i cos phi that is the what i am interested in this equation just i am substituting that in the p is equal to vi cos phi what i am getting 
E V by Z S cos delta minus phi minus V square by R Z S square. This is the power angle equation with the resistance considered. But in the network, in the, the power network, that is R is very very small as compared to the its reactance. Therefore, R is neglected. R is neglected. Therefore, if R is equal to zero, Z S is becomes excess. Z S is becomes excess, and the second term is zero because R is zero. R is zero. The same thing I have written here. It is E V by excess, and phi is also zero because sorry, uh, this is delta minus phi. That is, if R is equal to zero, R is equal to zero. Then you can look into cos phi is equal to R by Z. R by Z, R is zero. Therefore, that is also zero. Therefore, sorry, phi is 90 degree. Phi is 90 degree because it is act as a pure inductive circuit. Phi is equal to 90. It is 90 minus delta. You can take minus of 90 minus delta. Minus of 90 minus delta. That is minus cos is plus phi only. 90 minus cos 90 minus delta is sin delta. Cos 90 minus because when R is equal to 0, phi is 90 degree. Phi is 90 degree. Therefore, it is becomes delta minus 90. You take minus outside. Minus 90 minus delta. Cos of minus is cos only. Therefore, it is 90 minus delta. Cos 90 minus delta is sin delta. Therefore, your P will be Ev by excess sin delta. P is equal to Ev by excess sin delta. This is what we are calling as the power angle equation. It is called as a power angle equation. Then we will draw the curve relating P and delta. That is if you are drawing a curve uh, that is uh, delta versus P then it is called as the power angle curve. That is a power angle curve of a single generator is a graphical representation of electrical output with respect to the power angle. That is we have got a our standard equation that is P is equal to E by x sin delta. Here the R is neglected. Then on y axis we are taking P and the reference axis delta. Then that is E V by x s. We can E is constant, V is constant, x s is constant. That is P is varying with the delta. As the delta increases then the P is also increases and it is reaching its maximum value when delta reaches 90 degree. Then afterwards once again the power is goes on decreasing. That you are observing here. The P is following the sine function here. Therefore what I am getting is this is the, the power angle curve. Then when this power is maximum when the sine delta is equal to 1 where delta is equal to 90 degree. Therefore we are getting a maximum power here. It is a maximum power. Therefore, it is occurring when delta is equal to 90 degree. When the delta is equal to 90 degree, this maximum quantity, that is the maximum quantity of the power delivered, what we are calling is Ev by excess, that is P max. This is also called as a steady state stability limit. That is, the machine is operating up to stable condition when delta is equal to 90 degree in the case of non serial pole types, when if it is the resistance is neglected. If you are loading the machine beyond the angle delta is equal to 90 degree, it is loses its singleness.